Today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than usual. And I think most of you might find interesting. We're going to be testing and I'm also going to be showing you the difference between PWM, DSHOT 150, DSHOT 300, 600 and 1200 and why DSHOT 600 and 1200 might be useless. So before getting started, a word from our sponsor. Huge shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and right now they're running a pretty massive promotion. If you're looking to get your PCBs done such as for example, my open hardware flight controller or anything else, you can go ahead and check them out. I'll have links to them down below. So right now what we're looking at is we're looking at the signal output from a flight controller. This is live. This is my hand right here. The flight controller is connected uh, right next to the oscilloscope here. And we're running PWM frequency currently. And I wanted to show you this real quick so we can actually start getting some measurements and show you what I mean by why DSHOT 600 and 1200 might be useless. And I don't think there is going to be anything above that for a pretty long time. So here's our throttle right here. And if I were to move, because this is connected on motor one, you can actually see what's going on live. So this is PWM frequency. And this is how a zero throttle looks like going down to your ESC if it's using PWM. And this is full throttle and everything in between. So as we can tell here, and we could read that right there, it's taking two milliseconds. So the whole packet to tell the motor what to do takes a total of two milliseconds, which is quite a lot if you're running PWM. Nobody's running PWM nowadays, but I just really wanted to show you the difference. So this is PWM. Let's go ahead and switch over to D-Shot. Also, take note of the PID loop frequency. It's at 0.5 kilohertz. Now, why is that? No matter what you do, it will not go over 0.5 on the PID loop frequency. Why? Because it has to match the maximum output of the PWM. No matter what I change this to, save and come back, it'll always be 0.5 whether, when you're on PWM. If we go down to DSHOT 1500 and we save, now remember, we're running on two milliseconds, the PWM frequency. We see how small it became here for basically one command to come in or what throttle the motor should be at. And if we go to the motors and we actually change the throttle, we see that it doesn't change much because it's digital. These are little pulses. Now, if we zoom in, so we're gonna zoom in here and we're gonna grab a quick measurement. So as we've seen earlier, we were running at a two full milliseconds for just one packet of a throttle value. And on DSHOT 150, it is 102 microseconds. That is a huge difference from two milliseconds to 104 microseconds. That is insane. And it even gets more insane once we hit DSHOT 1200. However, you're overlooking something. And that is if we zoom back out, we see that we're still getting them in roughly the two millisecond, just like the PWM. So what is the point here if we're still sending the motor signal every two milliseconds? I mean, what the hell? You look at all this empty dead space here. But that's when you go back into the configuration and you go down to the PID loop. Now, when we go to the PID loop, now we could increase it to a maximum of four kilohertz. We can't increase it more than that. We cannot increase uh, DSHOT 150 PID loop to more than four kilohertz. And now you can see we're taking full advantage of every single packet that's coming in. Just let this stabilize real quick. So now I've gotten it to stabilize. And as you've seen, we were just sending two, basically two motor values on DSHOT 150 at 0.4 kilohertz uh, from this line to this line. We were only sending one packet here and one packet here. However, when we increase it to four kilohertz, so now we're taking full advantage of the DSHOT 150 here. So look at how many uh, motor value packets are being passed through right now. So that is quite a lot. However, we cannot push this more than four kilohertz on DSHOT 150. But before we jump to DSHOT 300, let's get a measurement of the packet size of DSHOT 150. And again, it's around 105 microseconds here. Now, let's go ahead and change this to DSHOT 300 and see what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to DSHOT 300. And again, now we see we've gotten a little bit faster actually by half right there, which is 54 milliseconds, roughly 54 microseconds, sorry, 54 microseconds for DSHOT 300. But again, the same issue. What's the point of this speed increase when we're still sending the data around the same rate? A packet here and a packet here, we have all this empty space. And that's where your PID loop frequency needs to be upped again. However, DSHOT 
uh, 300 can run on 8 kilohertz. So now we're going to take full advantage of the DSHOT 300. Now let me go ahead and stabilize this again. So right now it's been stabilized again. Now we're taking full advantage of the 8 kilohertz. And again, we're running each motor value percentage update per packet. So this is 50%, 75% throttle. This is a theoretical. Uh, we see that it can be completely covered with just DSHOT 300. So DSHOT 1200 is basically currently useless as of this moment. So let's go ahead and increase this to DSHOT 600. So we said this is around 50 microseconds, uh, the speed of each packet. And let's go ahead, set this to DSHOT 600, and let's get a quick measurement here. So we can see that it's roughly 27 microseconds now. Now remember, PWM was two freaking complete milliseconds. That is insane, insane. I'm going to show you a little example to show you uh, how much that was. So check this line out right here. We'll pretend that's the beginning of a PWM signal and right about here. So look how many DSHOT 600 packets we could fit in one PWM signal. However, we could still do a lot more if we are able to run a bigger PID loop frequency. So right now we're still not taking full advantage of DSHOT 600. So it's nice that we have it, but it's, it's basically useless currently. So now let's take it one step further and go to DSHOT 1200. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to set up to D shot 1200. We'll also double check pro shot. I, th I don't think I've seen pro shot yet. So we're going to see the size difference here. And we're going to connect. Did it save it? Didn't look like anything changed. So right now we're running on D shot 1200. Let's get this measurement right here. 14 microseconds, say 15 microseconds. 14 microseconds. I'm not really measuring that super, super accurate too. So if you really want like total accuracy, it's around 14.8 microseconds. Uh, but again, we're not fully utilizing. Look how look how big of a dead wasted space that is right there. We could probably push this. I think 16 kilohertz. That's where we were running this. Um, yeah. So right now, as of right now, DSHOT 1200 is basically useless since we've uh, moved away from the uh, 16 kilohertz update frequency. Was it 16 or 24? I forgot. I think it was 16. So basically right now, since we're capped at 8K update frequency for the PID loop, uh, it's, you know, DSHOT 1200 is useless, but we are currently future proof. Let's take a look at ProShot. So I'm just going to zoom in on DSHOT 1200. And I'm also going to do this just to keep reference of how big it actually was. So how big is that? 14.7 microseconds. Let's just say here's pro shot. Let's go ahead and take a look at pro shot, how that's going to be. Hopefully I don't need to modify my triggers. That is insane. Look at pro shot. It's the same size, basically, uh, probably a little bit bigger. It's around 15 microseconds. It's still within the same range as uh, D shot 1200. But I really want to see how it looks like when we increase the motor value here. That's crazy. It's still somewhat digital. I think it's a mixture between PWM and digital here. Um, and it's to avoid a lot of noise issues. I still haven't personally tested it, but um, yeah, I'll we'll probably test it in the future sometime. I need to figure, up, figure out a nice setup to have noise come into these signals and see how they're affected, whether with ProShot. It's, it's really difficult to test something like that. But I think if I, if I give myself two weeks, I'd figure something out on that. Um, but yeah, that's just a little intro into what we can test out. I want to see if it's gaining attraction because previously when I used to make these videos, they've never really got that much attraction. And if you guys are interested into this, let me know down in the comment section and also come vote on Patreon and uh, win yourself a ton of giveaways. I'm currently working on giving 10% of the number of Patreons I have. So I have 200 uh, Patreons, I want to give at least 10% of that number as giveaways, so 20 premium giveaways. This month I did six, next month I'll be doing 10 giveaways. And I basically, I think I only have two pa new Patreons for December. And also, my new Patreons have a dedicated giveaway just for them. So if I got like five this month, then it'll be a giveaway or two between those five. So your probabilities of winning are still high. And also, my older Patreons, you guys, uh, the rest of the giveaways basically go to you. And everything is premium, nothing is crap. And this is what I try to do is to give back to you guys and help me keep going. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have links to some cool stuff I use down below. If you want to go ahead and check those out, that'll also be great. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.